1828, Giuseppe Donizetti embarked from Italy on his way to Constantinople, for he was offered the post of Instructor General to the Imperial Ottoman Army. This was a turning point in his career and also in the musical history of Turkey, for he was invited by the reforming Sultan Mahmud II uh, to become the Instructor General of the Imperial Ottoman Music and to teach young Ottoman recruits the rudiments of European music, theory and harmony. Um, Giuseppe Donizetti's life really um, is almost like a film. He was born into a very poor family in the northern part of Italy, in Lombardia, in the city of Bergamo, in uh, a basement floor of a house uh, where Gaetano was also born, his world-famous composer of opera composers, of course. And um, he was trained in Italy uh, at the time in Bergamo uh, under Johann Simone Meyer, um, the, the local cathedral, but unlike his younger uh, brother, he pursued a career in military and he became a military musician in the Italian regiments and served under Napoleon Bonaparte on the Isle of Elba and after the fall of Napoleon he lost his employment and he was seeking, he worked in various uh, local bands as a, a, as a military musician. And subsequently, he was made this offer to become uh, the Ottoman Sultan's uh, master of music. His family at first objected to this decision because it was, after all, he was going to a foreign country, a different religion, under the, to be under the service of the Ottoman Sultan. Um, these were all um, quite uh, unknown future. He obviously came for a, a year or two, but in the end he stayed in Constantinople for the rest of his life, from 1828 until his death in 1856. In fact, he is still buried in the St. Esprit Cathedral in the heart of the city in Istanbul uh, to this very day. Uh, Donizetti lived in Pera, where the Christian community at the time uh, was based. And we understand from his letters that he rose to uh, high esteem and found great favour at court. And he enjoyed his life um, there very much, for he stayed all that time. He, he was elevated to the rank of a pasha towards the end of his life. And... Um, he talks about teaching these Turkish young students the rudiments of European music at the time, but we also know that he wrote several ceremonial marches for his royal patrons, including Sultan Mahmud II, which is known as Mahmudiya March in Turkish, and also for Sultan Abdul Mejid, called uh, Mejidiya March. In 1847, when the celebrated pianist Franz Liszt came for a tour to the city, uh, which is uh, most interesting. And, and of course, Donizetti's presence there was important because he ordered the Erard piano, which Liszt played for his concerts at court and in the city. He stayed for about five weeks. It was June 1847. Um, he came um, and, uh, for this five-week sojourn. Uh, but it's as if he disappeared from the map, they write in various books about his life, because we know actually very little about his stay, although he did give concerts at the Russian embassy, he gave two recitals at court, Sultan Abdul Majid was delighted by his performance, and he visited Donizetti at his home in Pera, because we know there's a letter he wrote, Donizetti wrote to his son Andrea, who was in Paris at the time, telling him about Liszt's visit to his house the night before, where he collected uh, manuscript scores of his march uh, for Sultan Abdul Majid, because subsequently Liszt composed a paraphrase for this, um, based on the themes of Sultan Abdul Majid's um, march that was written by Giuseppe Donizetti. Um, other important documents that shed on his life, important information on Donizetti's life, uh, 
several volumes of manuscript, autograph, uh, music scores that he kept. Um, they're like musical diaries of his time from the 1830s in the city because he not only wrote ceremonial music for his royal patrons, but he also uh, harmonised traditional Turkish music that he heard on the streets of the city and from his fellow students and also Turkish masters at the time. Uh, Turkish music being monophonic, of course, he added the harmonic dimension. So these were really like... Um, trials. Um, he, 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 he did various forms of harmonizations of traditional uh, songs. But it wasn't only the Turkish influence. I mean, there are pieces that celebrated the Sultan's new palace on the banks of the Bosphorus. He wrote music for that. There was a, a, a mighty storm in the city that was reported on all newspapers of the time, at the time he was there, which um, Donit City wrote um, a, a piece to, uh, to, to remember that event, uh, the great big storm uh, of that particular year in the 1830s, which survived in the collections of Naples uh, archives and the conservatoire there. Um, his influence in the city was not only restricted to music at court. He taught certainly to the family, the Ottoman royal family, um, the Sultan's uh, um, court, but also supported the local operatic season because there was the Noam Theatre, which was very famous at the time, um, active from mid-1840s until it burnt down in 1870. Um, and Donizetti was advising uh, on the productions, the repertoire. In fact, his brother's operas were performed there regularly, uh, and so were operas of Verdi and uh, other Italian composers like Bellini and Rossini. So it was really a very, very important operatic stage at the time. And when the great theatre uh, was rebuilt after a fire and opened in 1848 with Verdi's Macbeth, uh, conducted by Andrew Mariani, uh, Giuseppe Donizetti was among the audience. I wrote his life many years ago in Turkish, and recently it was translated by Nicola Verderame into Italian and published by uh, Sandro Tetti Editore in Italy. And it is being launched in May uh, 2022, in next week in Rome, uh, and I'm very excited because I think it is very important for Donizetti's life and his contributions to Turkish musical culture uh, to be known also in his own country, in Italy. And I think music uh, plays a great role in our understanding of the diversity of cultures. And through these um, people like Giuseppe Donizetti, who commanded both cultures in this unique way, we can build on that heritage uh, at a time when our world is strongly divisive in many ways, sadly, but I think music should bring us together, and Donizetti's life certainly plays a very important role in that. Thank you very much.